Hi guys, welcome to today's video. And I'm going to be making a game terrine today. But it's actually more of a pigeon terrine. Using some of these lovely pigeon breasts from the birds that were shot on Sunday. I have made a couple of game terrines during the um, season. But obviously I've got nothing left now. So it's the same principle. You can, you can use pigeon in your game terrine. Or you can change it for pheasant, partridge, rabbit, venison. Anything to be honest. And they're really easy to make. So what I've got for mine, I've got four pigeon breasts because I've got a one pound loaf tin. I've got 16 rashers of oak smoked um, shrieky bacon. I've got eight grams of mace and 10 grams of parsley and obviously salt and pepper just to taste. And then in here, I've got 500 grams of minced pork. And what I like to do as well when I make um, what I call a proper game terrine um, is add about 150 grams of minced rabbit. So it's just a bit of a change of texture and a change of uh, flavour. So what I'm going to start off by doing is just seasoning this mince and add in the herbs and spices. And I like to as well, um, I like to add five crushed juniper berries, but I haven't got any left. I thought I had, but I used them up on my last um, game terrain. But again, at this point, I'd add in my juniper berries, but it's just optional. You can add whatever herbs or spices you like to this. This is what we call the, the force meat for the terrain. So that's all mixed up, and that smells be beautiful already. So that's nicely combined. So the next thing I do is get some of my streaky bacon and just lay it in the bottom and push it against the side of the tin so it drapes over. Just like that. So keep laying your bacon all the way around your tin until it's completely covered. Right, so once you've lined your tin with your bacon, it's time to actually start building the actual terrine. So I start off with a couple of spoonfuls of the force meat or the mince at the bottom and really compact it down into the corners. because the end result will be so much better. It won't be loose, it won't be crumbly, it will be a really nice, firm terrine. So the first layer is down, and I'll take my pigeon breast, and I'll lay that in, and I'll make sure it's got a gap around the outside, just so this meat can can really get round it. So I'll put a couple on top there. And you can make these terrines in advance as well. And I personally think they're better made um, a day or two before. Because I make these for our shoot, for 11s. So I normally make these say about a day or so before, just so they can obviously set in the fridge and then flavours can really develop and then when I make like I keep calling my proper game terrain when I make my normal game terrain um, I do sear off a lot of the pheasant and the partridge but things like with the red meat I never do because it can because if the cooking time in the oven it can actually dry it out a little bit even though you've got the pork the pork meat here to help with the um, retaining the moisture I don't really bother. So the last layer, I'll just put the pigeon on top and I'm finishing up now with this meat. So it's just a case of working it in these gaps. Push it 
pushing it down and I'm going to start to bring this bacon over now so I'll start with say the corner here and I'll just give mine a flick at the edges and tuck it in and I'll bring that one over there if you want you can try and make a bit of a pattern on it and that like that that across there these two straight down the middle so that is initially the game terrain made up I'm going to turn the oven on I'm going to let this sit for a minute but I'm going to get the oven on and then I'll show you how to tray it up and put it in the oven right once the oven is preheated you want to cook your terrain in what we call a bain marie so it's just a large roasting tray you know, get some foil and cover, not too tightly, but just cover the tree with some foil and then half fill it with boiling water, just like that. And throughout the cooking, you just want to keep an eye on the water, make sure it doesn't evaporate out of the tray. And if it's looking quite low, just simply add some more boiling water. So this is going to go into a preheated oven set at 180 degrees for an hour and a half. Um, obviously every oven's different, so give it a probe. But what I do with mine, just for the last 15 minutes, I remove the foil just so the top can brown up a bit and get a, bit, a little bit more crispy. Well, the terrine's all cooked now. It was exactly an hour and a half. You'll get a load of fat, obviously, coming from the um, pork mince in the terrine dish. So all I do is empty that um, out. And because I've made mine a dome shape, as you can see like that, I don't need to weigh mine down. Because normally if you make um, a terrine, if it's flush with the tray, you get another terrine dish, put it on top and weigh it down. So because this is still hot, this is going to sit out now um, for an hour and a half before it goes in the fridge. And then you want to keep it in the fridge for a minimum of eight hours, but it, well, ideally overnight. So once it's chilled down, we'll get this out of the uh, dish and we'll slice it up. Well, it's the moment of truth now. I'm just going to cut into the terrain and just see how it's set. That looks spot on. You can see the uh, obviously different layers of pigeon. You can imagine that layered up with a different game and serve that with a bit of fruit chutney, toasted brioche slices. That's beautiful. So, there you go, guys pigeon terrain or game terrain. Simple.